Hello, my name is Jung Yok Song. I'm a second author of this talk, and I'm going to present today instead of the first author. The title of this talk is Smart Black Box Forging of UDS Cam. It will describe how to do UDS Cam forging well in the Black Box environment. So, who we are? We are all Red Team and Blue Team members in OutCrypt. Autocrypt is a mobility security company, and recently we focus on the automotive cybersecurity. We have conducted body tests and pen tests with automakers and tier suppliers. Also, currently we are developing a forger specialized for vehicles. So in this talk, I would like to share tips and know-how that we have experienced during the test during the forging test in the automotive industry. So first, let's talk about forging tests in the automotive industry. Automakers often have no choice but to perform black box forging because the tier suppliers don't provide the codes to automakers. Also, automakers should test the complete vehicle since about hundreds of issues are connected in the completed vehicle, it is very hard to get all issues source code and instrument them and build them again for fudging. So it's inevitable to do black box fudging tests in the, in the completed vehicle. However, black box fudging for vehicle is not easy. First, we cannot do coverage guided forging because there is no source code. Second, we cannot do cross triage in detail because we can't connect into the inside of issues. The only way we can monitor status and obtain the information about the target vehicle is the OVD port or harness scan lines. You know, we cannot do much things only using these lines. What we have to do in black box forging. In this talk, we define three black box forging challenges. First, test case generation. In black box forging, coverage guided forging is impossible. So we can't monitor code coverage achieved by each test case. Then how to generate effective test case? Second, fail detection. In black box forging, there is no way to connect into the target by SSH shell or debug port. So we can't directly monitor the forged process. Then how to monitor target and how to know how to found the issues. Third, reset. Forger should continue to forging even if the target is dead. In order to do that, forger should automatically initialize the target. But again, there is no way to connect into the SUT. Then how to reset or reboot SUT when it is dead? Can you solve these challenges only using the harnessed can lines or OBD port? So this talk proposes how to do smart black box forging for UDS CAN. To do smart forging, we solve the previous challenges by using UDS features. This talk will be a practical guide for people who want to do automotive forging tests in the black box settings. This is the overview of this presentation. So until now, it was introduction. Next, I'm going to explain how to solve each challenges. Test case generation, fail detection, and target reset. And finally, I will conclude the talk. OK, let's talk about test case generation first. Test case generation is the most important part of purging. We consider three things to generate effective test case. First, 
it's efficient to generate a test case only for the available UDS service. Second, Fuzzle should transmit a test case complying with the message sequence. Third, Fuzzle should transmit multiple frames when a test case is large. To effective forging, Fuzzle should consider the above UDS can features. So I'm going to explain the details of each item in the next slide. Uh, before that, I'm going to describe the basic rules of test case generation. Forger set the target issue and generates test case for each UDS service. It means that can ID and service ID are fixed and the other fields are mutated. Of course, you can mutate can ID and service ID, but it is not that effective because most issues filter wrong can ID and service ID. There are 26 services in UDS, and each service has their own service ID. Forger doesn't need to generate and test the all UDS services because not all services are available in the issue. In my experience, usually about 10 services are available in the issue. So it is efficient to generate test cases only for the available services in the target issue and test only them. So before start forging, forger should check the available services on the target. To check the available service, first forger send a valid can message over each UDS service. This valid message is a request that issue must send a response. Second, Forger checks the response to the, to the request. Then Forger decides the availability of the service depends on the response. If it is a positive response, the service is available. Or if there is no response, the service is unavailable. And if a negative response is received, Forger decides depends on the negative response code, which is NRC. It means that Forger doesn't decide that the service is unavailable, even if the negative response is returned. Uh, in, uh, some negative response are decided as available. I'm going to show some examples in the next slide. First, this is the example of positive response and no response. If a positive response is returned, we can know that the service is available. It's very, it's very trivial. In this example, further checks diagnostic session control service. When a positive response is returned, we can know that diagnostic session control service is available. Second, there is, if there is no response within the timeout period, Forger decides that the service is unavailable. Because there is no response to the message that should be answered, it means that the service is unavailable in the issue. Last case is negative response. As I said, not all negative responses are determined as unavailable. Forger should decide depending on the NRC. For example, sub function not supported negative response is decided as available because it means that the service is available, but just the sub function is wrong. So if we can fix the sub function value, it will return a positive response. However, service not supported negative response is decided as unavailable because it means the service is not supported. So Fuzzer should make a different decision for each NRC. Next, Fuzzer should consider the message sequence when it generates test cases. 
Some UGH services have the message sequence. It means that there are some services that should be proceeded before the target service is requested. Forger should follow the message sequence. For example, if Forger wants to test write memory by address service, the test case should be transmitted after both diagonal session control and security access are passed. If the forger doesn't one of the two service, uh, if the forger doesn't pass one of the two service, the target issue will ignore the right memory by address request. So the test case becomes meaningless. Therefore, forger must know the uh, forger must know the message sequence of all. UDS services. Next, Forger should also follow the multi-frame transmission rule, which is ISO TP. If test case payload exceeds a byte, the test case should be transmitted in multi-frames, and it should follow the ISO TP rule. The large payload should be divided into multi frames, and Forger should transmit the first frame at first. Then Forger should transmit consecutive frames after receiving the flow control frame. If Forger doesn't follow this rule and just transmit the large payload, the target issue will ignore the test case. Until now, I talked about test case generation. Now I'm going to talk how to detect a failure caused by fuzzing test. The fuzzer must decide pass or fail at each time whenever it sends a test case. We introduced four fail criteria. First, no response to the valid request. After the test case transmission, Forger sends the valid request to the issue and check the response. If there is no response within a timeout period, it's a fail. Second, specific negative response to the valid request. If Forger receives some specific negative response to the valid request, it's also fail but not all negative responses are failed. First and second criteria are same with the way used in the services availability check. Third one is a diagnostic trouble code, which is a DTC occurrence. Forger periodically checks whether DTC occurs. If a new DTC occurs, it reports as failed. Last one is user specified can message occurrence. If, if tester specifies a certain can message as a fail, the forger report fail when that can message occurs. So now I will describe the details of each criteria. First one is no response. Forger sends a valid request after test case transmission to check target state. If there is a positive response, it's passed. But there is no response within a timeout period, Forger reports paid. In UDS, the default timeout period is 15 milliseconds. Next, negative response. If there is a negative response to the valid request, forger reports fail depending on the NRC. As it is a uh, service available to check, certain NRC are decided as pass, not fail. Uh, this example is the same with the service available to checking. Even if some function not supported, the negative response is returned. It passed. 
but if service not supported or uh, negative response return is to fail. So how you should decide depending on the NRC. Third one is diagnostic trouble call. If a new DTC occurs, it's fail. Fuzzer can detect the occurrence of new DTC by sending read DTC information request. If there is a new DTC, uh, the issue will return the response with the new DTC information. If there is no uh, no new DTC, it's passed. But if there is a new DTC occurs, it will be paid. Last one is user specified K message occurrence. Tester can specify a certain K message occurrence as fail. Then, if the K message occurs, further report fail. But there is a precondition to use this method. Further must be able to monitor the K bus that the K message to be transmitted. So this example showed the overview. For example, when we do fudging test to the head unit issue, we can define the following K message across edge fail, such as um, brake, brake press or accelerator pedal press, or any other K message that have no relation with the head unit and can cause the dangerous situation uh, while driving. Uh, it's a kind of custom rule, so tester just specify some K message which are which it, uh, prohibited occurrence when a uh, forging test is conducted. But as I said, it requires a precondition uh, to monitor the occurrence of CAM messages. Other should be able to monitor the CAM bus. So we will talk about how to detect the fail. Uh, when fail occurs, further should initialize the target. Now I'm going to talk about how to reset the target issue automatically. <clears throat> uh, when failure occurs, uh, it means that the target is dead or some trouble occurs. In that case, the fuzzer should initialize the target to continue the fuzzing test. If the fuzzer cannot initialize the target, uh, the fuzzing test will be terminated or meaningless test will be conducted. Test can manually initialize SUT, but it's a very tough task to do whenever fail occurs because tester should keep an eye on the SUT while the fuzzing is in progress. You know, fuzzing test is a very time consuming task. So people cannot stay whole, uh, during the whole time. So automatic SUT reset uh, is required. So this is the reset overview. Left figure shows the example when the, there is no automatic reset, and right one shows the example when there is a reset process. Uh, if further transmit the test case, even if the SUT is dead, that will be a meaningless test because SUT is dead. So we should reset or reboot the target when fail occurs. 
So right figure showed the example with reset. When Fossil detect fail, it will execute the reset process to initialize the target. After target is reset, after reset, the test will be the test will be continued. Then how to reset? We can use two UDS services, uh, issue reset and clear diagnostic information. First, issue reset service can do reset issue. Uh, if some function value is one, hard reset is performed. Hard reset is performing power on or start up the target, uh, the issue. And if some function value is three, soft reset is performed. Soft reset is just a restart the application program. So in my experience, hard reset, uh, I recommend hard reset, but sometimes soft reset is also works. And second one is clear diagnostic information service. Uh, this service clear all diagnostic trouble code data, which is DTC. You can specify the data you want to clear using the parameters. Uh, but we, but I recommend to clear all DTC data by setting all parameters as FF. So in the slide, I just write 0, 4, 14, and 3 FF. That 3 FF means uh, choose all, all data to be clear. So when, uh, as I've said before, the puzzle uh, can detect fail by detecting DTC occurs. So when DTC occurs, uh, the puzzle detect as fail, and then puzzle should clear that DTC to continue the next test case. So now I'm gonna conclude this talk. In automotive industry, black box pause, black box pause testing is often required. To do smart black box posing, further should consider the features of UDS scan as it is that. First, Test at test case generation, Forger should check the available services and generate test cases for only the available services. This is more efficient. And the test case should be generated and transmitted with the consideration about message sequences, also frame types. If a payload is over eight bytes, the payload should be transmitted in multi frames. Uh, and there are four methods to detect fail. First one is no response. Second one is negative response. Uh, after the test case transmission, Fossil will uh, transmit a valid request. And if there is no response or some negative response is returned, that will be fail, but not all negative response are fail. So for the should decide depends on the energy. And third one is dynamic trouble code. And also you just specified can message across should uh, can be fail or uh, criteria. Tester can specify some can message occurrence to be a fail. And in the reset process, puzzle should be, puzzle should automatically reset the target. Uh, puzzle can, can reset the issue by using issue reset and clear diagnostic information service. 
So when forger detect a fail, the forger should automatically reset by using both service. After a reset is confirmed, then forger should uh, transmit the next test case. So this is end of my presentation. Uh, thank you very much.